my name is Derek from Tomcat Gas Training and welcome to this video all about a review of what I've seen in this month's May 2021 Gas Engineer magazine. Something close to my heart. But before we get into this video, please can you take some time to subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want YouTube to tell you when we upload the videos. You're not forgotten, have you? It's Mondays and Wednesdays. Anyway, I've done enough waffling, so let's get on with it and find out what it is that I'm passionate about in this book. Now, some of you who watch my videos on a regular basis may know, or may not know, that I am severely dyslexic. And I was diagnosed when I was 10 years old. Well, they didn't, they really said I was thick. <laughs> So when I was in primary school, they did some tests on me and they came up with the answer that I was thick. And I should really continue doing my sport and doing my drawings because they found I was very artistic. Or was it artistic? It was one of the two anyway. <laughs> so after I saw this in the uh, the May edition of the Gas um, Engineers magazine, my wife told me it was a really good read. And she told me, or she asked me, did I know that uh, there could be, where was it now, up to 26,600 gas engineers out of the 77,000 who read this every month could be dyslexic. And it got me thinking, does having dyslexia actually stop you becoming a gas engineer? So uh, hopefully in this video we'll find out if being dyslexic stops you being a gas engineer. But what I didn't realise until she noticed, until she said, was uh, gas say tech in the with the way they spelt dyslexia on the front of the book. And who thought of spelling dyslexia like that? <laughs> Why did they make something incredibly hard when you can't actually spell it? Why did they put a Y in it? And what's the X for? Dyslexic? Anyway, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to try and explain what dyslexia is, how it's affected me throughout my life as a gas engineer and as a human being, and um, Basically tell people, if you have got dyslexia, and you have been diagnosed with dyslexia, that um, it shouldn't really affect your life if you put your mind to it. So what is dyslexia then? And where's this word come from? Well, the word dyslexia comes from the Greek word dyslexis, which means... Um, bad language or poor words, something like that. So that's where the word dyslexia originates from. Like I say though, they could have made it easier to spell for us. So what is the dyslexia then? Well basically, for people like me, it's being able to take sounds of words and translate them into letters. This is where we kind of struggle. Now I personally struggle with letters such as D's, B's, uh, number five with S and um, Q's and G's, things like that. I get mixed up all the time and I've really struggled with those. Um, other people see the words whizzing around. I don't get that because most dyslexics are different. We're not all exactly the same and we all have different traits and we all overcome them in different ways. So my big problem when I was a kid was just being able to read the words. Now a lot of dyslexics are able to break the words down into sections. I still can't do that. <laughs> I still struggle to do that. I have to be told what the word is and how to say the word and then a part of my brain I've trained then to be able to remember that word. That's the way I've learned to read. That not breaking down the letters like a lot of dyslexics do that somebody telling me exactly what it is and how to say the word and then I've remembered it by repeating it over and over and over again. That's the way I've overcome that part. 
I still struggle now when I have a word I've never seen before. I can't translate it. My brain doesn't see it until somebody tells me what it is. This is where this comes in, my mobile phone. Without the mobile phone and being able to write in the letters and then press the little speaker and it tells me exactly what the word is, I would struggle with new words unless I just basically ask people. Now, my wife has a very mild dyslexia. She is a bookworm. She's amazing with words. She comes out with words. When she comes out with a word I've never heard before, I just say, is that Charlotte made up? Because I don't know if it's a word or not, because I've never heard it before. But my wife struggles really, really badly with which is her left hand and which is her right hand. And a lot of dyslexic people get that. My really good friend at school, Rodney, who was also dyslexic, and still is dyslexic, hi Rod, he still struggles with his left and right hand, where I've never had that. I've always been able to use, do my left and right. So, even though my wife is an incredibly intelligent lady, and this shocks me, <laughs> that she is an incredibly intelligent lady, but she cannot take direction, she cannot give directions because she doesn't know the difference between a left or right. And that is classed as a very mild form of dyslexia. Unlike mine, where I was going through a child, I didn't even learn to write my name properly until I was in secondary school. When you're called Derek Robbins, and you mix your D's and B's up and your E's and 3's up, you can imagine how I struggled to write my own name. <laughs> and I remember it as clear as today when I first conquered being able to write my name without making any mistakes. They're the little steps we make as being a, someone who suffers with dyslexia. Weird but it's true. I remember my teachers telling me, you'll never be able to do poetry. Anyway, I proved them wrong and I made uh, a cup, a plate and a saucer. I showed them how to do poetry. Anyway, joking aside, they're the kind of things that dyslexics really struggle with. Words which are close to each other which are miles apart in real life. And again, we all struggle with different things. But the main thing with dyslexia is being able to overcome it. Being able to adapt, because we don't really overcome it, we adapt. Some guys look at dyslexia as a superpower. Some people look at it as a curse. I look at it as a superpower and a curse because it's cursed me all the way through my life but I've been able to use my other abilities to be able to better myself in life. Things like the artistic side of me, being able to draw from a very early age, being able to make things out of boxes. So if you're an adult and you've got children and your child struggles to read and write but is amazing with Lego because <laughs> I was amazing with Lego and Meccano that's a good sign of dyslexia because we can figure out things incredibly easy and we see things incredibly easy in our minds where we have a start and a finish and I think that's why I can prompt my pipe work in the industry is pretty good. And it always has been that I can see the beginning and I can see the end. And I don't have to think about which way I'm going to run the pipes. It just, I just see it. It sounds weird to people who haven't got dyslexia. But I can picture the pipe run in my mind. I can see it and I can see all the obstacles I need to go over but I see it in milliseconds. So I can initially start a job and finish it and I don't have to think about which way I'm gonna run the pipes. So that's a gift, I guess. And I've got into using my gift 
into the job I do. Now researchers have been trying to find out the neurobiological basis of dyslexia since it was identified in 1881. Quite a time ago now, but uh, they did find that dyslexia runs in families. Now, my dad is amazing with numbers. I served my apprenticeship with my dad, uh, working alongside him. He had this ability to look at pipes in the same kind of way as I do, and also struggled being able to write. And not really reading, but my dad's spelling. He can read really well, it's just his spelling which is atrocious. Uh, my brother also suffers with signs of dyslexia as well for when he was a kid going through school. But my two kids don't really seem to show any signs of dyslexia and my grandkids don't neither. So hopefully it's jumped a couple of generations. That's not to say my great grandkids might have dyslexia. Let's hope they don't. So that's what research has pretty much found. Um, about the way dyslexia is passed from generation to generation so it must be something in the genes which does that. So let me give you a few figures which will shock you on how many people on this planet actually do suffer with dyslexia. It is estimated that 1 in 10 people in the UK suffers from some form of dyslexia. The BDA, or the British Dyslexia Association, states that around 10% of the UK population has dyslexia, with 4% of them being on the scale of what I'm at with dyslexia, which is uh, pretty bad. And that equates to around 7.3 million people in the UK suffer from some kind of dyslexia. But according to the Dyslexia Association in 2017, these figures could be wrong and it could be actually 16% of the UK population suffers from dyslexia with about 11.3 million in total. 11.3 million! My word! Now globally, Dyslexia International in 2017 said about 5-10% to of the world population suffers from dyslexia so that could be up to 700 million people worldwide have dyslexia. But again, some people say it could be up to 17% globally that people suffer from dyslexia. So that could be 30 million people in America. And like I say, around about 6 million people in the UK and about 3 million people in Canada suffer with dyslexia. Now most people don't even know they suffer from dyslexia because they think because they can read and write um, well then they don't suffer from dyslexia. But numbers is another one with dyslexia. I never learned my times tables at school at all and I still like pretend I do now because I don't and I'm rubbish with maths that's why I have to use calculators for the most simplest maths and that's where I make most of my mistakes in my videos with the spelling and the maths so um, so now you know why I'm rubbish at it uh, so pe people with dyslexia can suffer with with numbers as well as letters and I do both because I mix my fives and my s's and I mix my threes with my e's now one of the best advice I'd ever been given when I was at school was by my old English teacher Mrs Owen who told me to write with capital letters instead of the little ones because they all go the same way and it was the best advice I was ever given because as soon as I started doing that then everything started to fall into place and I started to read better than I was doing and then over the years I've still kept doing that, that's why when you see my videos and I've written on the board I write everything in um, capital letters because it makes it so much easier for me. So like I say, most people don't know they've got it and most people don't get found out that they've got it until they start preschool and then go on to primary school and then secondary school 
because it's the teachers who's normally the first person who finds out that their child, uh, the child is dyslexic. The parents are not really giving them letters and numbers and stuff to uh, to remember. But one thing I do I did find out was I've always suffered with nursery rhymes. I've hated nursery rhymes all my life. I hate them. I can't be doing with them. And that's another trait of uh, dyslexia where children struggle with nursery rhymes. They can't put the words together. Um, so if your child is struggling with uh, nursery rhymes but he's fantastic with Lego, then uh, there is every chance they could be suffering for dyslexia. But dyslexia is one of those brain problems which can be easily, no, it's not easily because it takes a long time, but can be overcome by the person with the dyslexia if they want to. Now, they say a lot of dyslexics have ADHD um, and they can't concentrate. I find this that, no, I didn't have ADHD. I haven't got ADHD. I know that because I'm such a calm person and noises and stuff like that don't bother me. But one of the things I do have is if I'm not looking at somebody and I'm not concentrating on what they're saying, I don't hear them. My wife will tell you this. She can have a full-scale conversation sat at the side of me and I'm watching TV. I won't have heard what she said because I'm concentrating on the TV. So I found that the way I've overcome my dyslexia is I have to really, really concentrate on what's going on. I'm also pretty hard of hearing as well, so I have to lip read anyway. But that's just the way I've overcome it. So like I say, we're not all the same. We all deal with things differently. But one of the things I will tell you is 40% of the millionaires throughout the world have dyslexia. And some of the most famous people in this world have suffered from dyslexia. So uh, let's find out who they are. Now, when I was going through the list of famous people with dyslexia, I was, um, I don't know if the word shocked, but my favorite all-time TV chef, Jamie Oliver, I think he's an amazing guy, suffers with dyslexia. So uh, that was a comfort for me, and my all-time favorite actor, behind Arnold Schwarzenegger, um, Tom Cruise, is also dyslexic. So two guys who've really shone in their fields, because they have, um, have both suffered with dyslexia and overcome dyslexia. I can't imagine an actor being able to remember their lines when, uh, when they're filming a film, because I struggle trying to remember the little lines I write or scribble when I'm making a, a YouTube video. So hats off to Tom Cruise, if he really is dyslexic, that he can manage to make such wonderful films. And hats off to Jamie Oliver for being able to do what he does in front of a TV camera and just produce his food. Well done, guys. Another one, Albert Einstein. E equals MC squared guy. He was supposed to be dyslexic. I believe he could hardly read and write. That's just absolutely incredible that a guy like him would be classed as dyslexic. George Washington, the American president, was said to have struggled reading and writing. He became the president of the United States. Was he the first president of the United States? Sorry, American friends, if I'm wrong, but uh, my still amazing achievement. And then there's Pablo Picasso. I'm not a real lover of Picasso's work. Um, when I studied art at school, and he wasn't my all-time favorite artist, but still amazing that a guy could produce stuff like that and be as famous as he is and be classed as being dyslexic. And also Leonardo da Vinci, another artist and engineer. 
amazing brain, amazing engineer, amazing guy. Not that I know him personally, but uh, again, quite shocked to find out that somebody of his ability was diagnosed with, or they thought he had um, dyslexia. Just truly amazing. And then in music, John Lennon. Well, he's produced such amazing songs and there's so many artists out there. Now my favourite band, Tears of Fears, all kind of base their stuff on John Lennon stuff. Absolutely amazing that the guy had dyslexia. Or uh, I guess it was, um, his name's gone straight out of my head. Paul McCartney, who wrote down all the words then. John Lennon maybe told him what to write down and he wrote him down. So, uh, maybe. And then we get to the entrepreneurs. Richard Branson. Steve Jobs. Supposed to have dyslexia. So, does dyslexia stop you becoming rich and famous? Obviously not. Does it stop you doing anything in life? Well, it can. But if you are dyslexic and you want to get somewhere and you've got that determination, I think these people we've just gone through will actually tell you you can do whatever you like. If you saw behind me before, a lot of the NASA scientists are dyslexic, which is also amazing. So really, does dyslexia stop you as a human being as a person doing what you're passionate about no it doesn't because not that I'm not that I know many dyslexics or uh, as bad as I maybe me and Rodney were probably at the same um, when we were at school um, both naturally left-handed um, I was forced to write with my right hand when I was a kid Maybe that's what scrabbled my brain. Um, so it'd be really interesting to find out how many dyslexic people are actually left-handed, how many are right-handed, um, and how many have gone on in just general life to achieve more than they would ever achieve if they weren't dyslexic. You know, how many dyslexic doctors are there? I can't see there being many dyslexic doctors, lawyers, uh, solicitors, um, English teachers. <laughs> I don't think there'll be many of those. Um, but, you know, it, dyslexia is not a disability like a lot of disabilities are because it can make you more determined, and it made me more determined, to do better than everybody told me I would. I'm thinking of starting my own society. I think I'll, uh, I'll call it TAPS. Gas Engineers and Plumbers Against Dyslexia. What do you think? Should I start the TAPS? Put it down in the comments below. Plumbers and gas engineers against dyslexia. Or was it gas engineers and plumbers against dyslexia? I forgot what I've said now. Anyway, what do you think? T-A-P-S. Put in the comments down below. Well, I think I've gone on and waffled enough now about dyslexia with this video. It's probably nearly half an hour long, if you're still with me. But if you are dyslexic, when you're a young kid and you've just been diagnosed with dyslexia, it's not the end of the world, guys. It's the beginning of the world and beginning of your life. And you just need to knuckle down and concentrate a lot harder than your friends do at school. If you're a parent and your child's just been diagnosed with dyslexia, it's not the end of the world, guys. You need to harness their abilities. You need to find out where they excel. But you also need to make sure they learn to read and write. Everybody's got to learn to read and write. When you weigh up, really, it's the Industrial Revolution what's caused this problem. 
Because if you think before the Industrial Revolution, we were really bothered about whether you could read or write. There were lots of people in the world who could not read or write. Um, so it's only really the modern life that's requiring us to read and write. But we've got so many aids now to help us, like mobile phones, like the internet, like computers, because you find out guys with and um, girls with dyslexia can enhance their skills using these products, basically. Like I say guys, girls, it's not the end of the world dyslexia. You can either see it as three ways. You can see it as a superpower. You can see it as a curse. Or you can see it as a superpower and a curse and just go for it. So if you've liked this video, why don't you give me a thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below. If you've not subscribed to my channel, then please subscribe because it helps. And don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want YouTube to tell you when I'm uploading videos. All I've got left to say is, don't let dyslexia stop you becoming what you want to become. See you on the next one, guys. Cheers.